you've often said that Uber and Tesla are sort of on this crash course in 15 years with the autonomous future. And I think it's interesting to play out the dichotomy of those two companies, but that's also a really great analogy of how much the auto industry or transportation is set to change and how these tech first companies are really a first mover there. So I'm assuming you're thinking, okay, all cars are autonomous. These are the two companies competing. I, and I know you're, you're an investor in Uber, so I don't know if maybe there's like bias or, but but my point is I I think Tesla is hugely, hugely advantaged here by building the actual hardware and like what they just did with the, the software chip and just like the way they're getting real world data on so many cars, like a magnitude more. I'm wondering like even, even Waymo, not even Uber, like how is, if data is the new oil, I just feel like Tesla with combining Tesla AI doesn't have the, as much uh, information as um, Google does because Google has maps, right? Google Maps and Waze. So Google has the most data. Uh, Uber would have probably the second most data because they have more drivers on the road driving more often. So a driver, you driving your, me driving my Model 3 to and from work every day is less than an hour of driving. It's 45 minutes. Um, an Uber driver with their phone tracking every movement on the road for 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day is going to produce much more data. But like gigabyte per hour driven, I would, isn't Tesla collecting much, much more like, and they're also learning how you oh, drive, sure. which may be the best way to train an autonomous system by watching mm-hmm. you drive, which is data. Maybe that, or maybe not. Maybe, um, it, that's true. They're probably collecting more data on like the car and uh, the steering wheel and all that kind of stuff. I do mm-hmm. think self-driving will be commoditized. I think hmm. it's not n- 90 Eight percent of the challenge of self-driving is going to be commoditized. It's really like this two percent that's really the edge cases that'll be hard to work out. But it's sort of like think of it like a word processor. Like when you buy a Mac, it has a word processor. When you buy a PC, it has a word processor. One's called Word. One's called whatever Apple calls theirs. When you buy a phone, you have a Notepad in it. It's kind of like super commoditized. Thirty years later, I think mm-hmm. we'll sit here thirty years from now and be like, yeah, of course, all cars can self-drive. It's not the differentiator. Um, and so what would be the differentiator then? Well, that's a great question. Um, whoever has the brand with all the credit cards in it, um, and has the best experience for consumers price. So brand price consumers. Yeah. Um, and data will help certainly for the edge cases. I think they'll become critically important. Um, but I think full autonomy, like level four or five autonomy, where you don't have a steering wheel, you don't have a driver, you don't need to be ready to take over. That level of autonomy is very far away, especially in cities, uh, especially in on rural roads. Where autonomy is going to work perfectly is, you know, Arizona, where there's never rain. But if you live here in San Francisco uh, or the Northeast and it snows, Teslas can't drive in the snow and Waymo can't drive in the fog. All right, like it's literally you're going to not be able to go to work. So in order for it to be really to take off, it's going to need to be very reliable in all these edge cases. Also, you know, people jumping in the street or bicycles and pedestrians jumping in and weird size streets and weird curves, it's going to be very hard. So I'd use autopilot every day uh, for probably, I don't know, four years I've used it every day between the Model X and the Model 3. And it's amazing and perfect on the 280 in perfect weather conditions. And you wouldn't want to drive it right now on streets. It can't do, it can't do, and, you, and you, you're and you not supposed to look away. I mean, I'm sure people do, but so it's, we're pretty far off um, in a city especially. So I don't think it, the collision course is going to be 10 to 20 years from now. At that time, Tesla might have four or five million cars on the road if they start making a half million a year or eventually a million a year. So you might be talking about a couple million cars and then they turn on, oh, all the cars are part of a giant Uber-like network. That'd be pretty powerful. That being said, I could see, you know, Uber also having a partnership with some car company that already produces millions of cars a year and having them already on the road as well. 